Last week, I bought you a car review on a car which is popular with influencers and even Batman. This week, I'm bringing you another one on a car which is popular with trendy dads and Spider-Man. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up is anyone else thinking that I need to do a sub-segment where I review cars which have been in superheroes' films? But let's get one thing straight. Batman is much cooler than Spider-Man. Hi guys, I'm Tish and welcome back to my channel, Auto Social UK. On this channel, I do new car reviews and car content. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Hyundai Tuscan. What do you mean it's not Tuscan? The season in another place? Oh, okay, so it's the Tucson. You don't pronounce the C? Okay, so it's the Tucson. Oh God, that is a dyslexic nightmare. And if at any point I call it anything else in this video, then you better mind your own business. Okay, so let's get into it. The Hyundai Tucson is a great family SUV that's lived in the shadows of rivals like the Nissan Qashqai and the Volkswagen Tiguan. Favoured for its warranty package, impressive practicality and affordable price tag. But let's face it, there was nothing sexy about the old Tucson. The same can't be said for the new model. This is a really striking vehicle. Those creases that are all around it make it look stealthy and sporty, especially finished in this N-line trim. You've got the matte grey paintwork contrasted with the black door mirrors and roof rails. And then you've got this really dark grey front grille. It's great. It's not going to be to everybody's taste, but I think it looks really sharp and smart. You've also got the LED lights, which flow seamlessly into the grille. You've got the big dominating Hyundai badge. You've also got little details as well. On the gloss black around these fog lamps, you've got little creases. And in front, again, you've got creases. And you've also got some physical air vents as well. So they're not just for show. It looks really good. And I know I'm gushing over it. And that's probably because this is one of the higher spec models. And though the old Tucson used to be affordable, you're definitely gonna have to splash your cash if you want something that looks like this. You've also got those classic new Hyundai style alloy wheels, which are just a little bit crazy. These wheels are finished in 19 inches, which may get a little bit of a too firm ride. The Hyundai Tucson is already pretty firm, but adding these 19s might make it just a tiny bit thrashy. If you wanted a slightly softer ride, and maybe not an alloy which is so crazy, then you can go for some 18s in a much more subtle design. Those creases continue around the side as well. You've got this crease which runs all the way along the body of the car to the middle. It just looks fantastic. It certainly isn't your everyday blobby SUV. The sharp styling doesn't just stop with the front of the car either, it's continued along to the back. I love the way that they've used the gloss black to almost shape the car and give it a more sporty silhouette. It breaks up the grey paintwork. You've also got those embossed details over the wheel arches and along here down from the spoiler. This spoiler's great as well. Look at those fins on top. It does make it feel super sporty. The lights are very cool as well. They're in a 3D design and they come off of the light bar and look a little bit like a set of fangs. Also, if you look very carefully, it's got the same detailing in it that you have mirrored in the front lights. Now, usually when I talk about a light bar, I also say about the Hyundai badge being spelt out across the tailgate, but not in this case. Now you've got the Hyundai badge, which is built into the rear window. It makes it look seamless. You've got a rear diffuser at the bottom again, which matches the front spoiler with those little fins. And you've got two tailpipes because this is the slightly sporty and slightly more powerful version. Inside this boot, you've got a really decent amount of space, 620 litres, although that does reduce slightly if you go for the hybrid model. Base is really practical as well. It's really wide and you've got a flat boot floor, so loading things in and out could not be simpler. 
underneath this boot floor you've got a little bit of additional storage if you go for the non-plug-in version to pop things away and hide them out of sight and you also get a 12 volt charger and a few little hooks to tuck things away plus you get a retractable parcel shelf which actually feels far more premium than a lot of its premium German rivals. The rear seats are in a three-way split, so that also means that loading things in and out when you're going on holiday or when you're taking people to the airport could not be simpler. I didn't have that high hopes for the interior of the Tucson. After all, I was a little bit disappointed with the interior of the i30, how it felt so dull and kind of boring, but this feels much flashier. It really is a lot nicer of a place to be. All the materials used are pretty nice. Yes, okay, they're not premium materials, but I think they get away with it because it's all put together in a nice package. You've got a nice kind of soft touch dashboard with this chrome detail which runs all the way along the air vents. The only thing I'm not too keen on is this little bit of material that runs along the dashboard with some funny kind of slashing details on there. I don't think it matches the rest of the vibe, but these seats are lovely, really, really nice seats. They're leather on the outside, or at least they look leather, and you've got an Alcantara type suede along the middle. And you've also got the little plates here with the N badge on them, really sharp, red stitching around the outside. These are seriously nice. Now, I wish they could have taken that Alcantara suede and put that on the dashboard, and that would have looked really good. It's very clear that when designing the cabin of this car, they wanted the driver to have a really comfortable place to be. And it definitely feels like that. You've got a really clear digital instrument cluster, which is nice and wide. It's got all of your information you could need. I would have liked there to have been a full screen map option, like you can get on some of the German rivals, but actually it does feel quite premium. You've got a nice leather wrapped steering wheel as well. It's leather wrapped on all versions, but on this one, the end line, you've got some contrasting red stitching as well. And there's a decent amount of shortcut buttons on the steering wheel to get to your cruise control and also your lane assist. I love it when brands put the lane assist option on your steering wheel because it's really easy to turn it off and on when you're driving along. The only thing I wish there was on the steering wheel is the driving mode buttons. They're located behind the gear lever. Not too much of an issue, but I just think it's easier to find them when they're on the steering wheel. Then there's this centre console. It's a really nice setup for the driver. You've got a really comfortable armrest, which you could easily fit two people's arms on here. And then you've got shortcut buttons to your heated seats and steering wheel, which are in a really convenient place. And also the cup holders. They're on the left hand side, which means when you're driving and you're resting your hand on the gear lever, they're not getting in the way if you've got cups in the cup holders. And then there's the actual infotainment system as well. It's very premium. It looks like the Range Rover. You've got a nice clear screen and then underneath you've got a physical section for your climate control. Now these buttons are touch sensitive, but they work pretty well. And actually this whole system just feels very well thought out. In the back, it feels very much set up for practical family life. I'm really comfortable. I've got a load of legroom and plenty of headroom, even with this panoramic sunroof. Plus the sunroof comes all the way back and that means the rear passengers benefit from it as well, unlike in some rivals like the Mazda CX-60. The middle seat is usable too. It may not fit three adults or three child seats side by side, but it's more than sufficient. And what else is good is despite this being a combustion car, there's actually a really low low tunnel, so people don't have to sit with their knees on their chin. The seats also recline if you want to get even more comfortable and take a little nap on road trips, but unfortunately the bench doesn't slide forwards and backwards like it does in some rivals. I've got a decent amount of amenities. I've got a pull-out armrest with two cup holders. I've got two USB charge ports. Even on this top spec N line, I've also got a sun blind. You shouldn't find any problems with getting comfortable behind the wheel. There's a decent amount of height adjustment in the seats, although they are manual and feel a little bit cheap. It would have been nice to have electric seats. 
Once you are sitting up nice and high, there's great visibility out of the front windscreen and you can also see all the way to the front of the bonnet. The only issue is, is these front pillars. They're sitting in a position which means when you're pulling out of junctions, it can impede on vision. You can see good visibility out of the rear windscreen, but again, the rear pillars do impede on your view. And this means parking this vehicle, because it's not small, can be a problem if you're not the most confident parker. Although the good news is, all versions of Hyundai specs mostly get rear parking sensors and a rear view camera. And then as you move up the lines, you can also get front parking sensors and a 360 degree camera. So you should be able to get used to parking it quite quickly. When my stepdad first saw this car on the drive, he said, that's got to be a diesel. There's no way that that big old lump has a petrol engine. But actually there's no diesel engines available for the Hyundai Tucson and petrols have moved along a lot. There's a few different variations of a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol, which comes as a petrol, a mild hybrid, and also a plug-in hybrid. The entry level is a 148 brake horsepower engine, which can be available as a standard petrol or a mild hybrid, and can also have a manual gearbox or an automatic. Both versions, the standard and the mild hybrid, go from 0 to 62 in around 10.3 seconds. Even for a vehicle of this size, you'll find that the pace is adequate. But if you do go for the automatic gearbox, it does tend to be slightly hesitant. The version that I'm driving is a more powerful 178 brake horsepower mild hybrid, which also comes with the automatic gearbox and, most importantly for a lot of people, four wheel drive as standard. Officially, this will hit 0 to 62 in nine seconds. If you're looking for a bit more electric power or something that runs solely on electric, then there's actually a plug-in hybrid version as well with 261 brake horsepower and of course again four-wheel drive as standard. Now this version will actually do up to 38 miles in fully electric which is really competitive compared to other plug-in hybrid SUVs. And that means if you're doing short journeys to the shops and back, or if you're just taking the kids to school and your journey is under 38 miles, this could really save some pennies when it comes to fuel. But the main problem is, is it's really expensive to start with. It's interesting actually, because the suspension on the Hyundai Tucson is much firmer than I was expecting it to be. Between the sharp styling of the exterior and that firmer suspension, it's clear that Hyundai didn't want to make another boring, plushy SUV. They wanted something with a slightly sportier appearance and drive. And the suspension does help with that engagement, although it can be just a little bit bumpy at lower speeds. I don't think it'll be anything that would put you off, and at higher speeds it does then soon settle out. I'm just a little bit disappointed that the steering doesn't match up to the suspension. It's not that well weighted and around corners, it rolls a little bit, it's not always the most engaging. But overall, it definitely feels much more fun to drive than some other SUVs. Hyundai have got to be onto a winner when it comes to this car. I'm not surprised it's snapped up so many awards recently. It offers really practical space, nice interior, and some stylish exterior as well. Plus it comes with some options of some hybrid technology which can save you money on your fuel economy. But what I'm a little bit disappointed with is though this comes with all wheel drive, how cool would an N version of a Tucson be? A Tucson N with around 300 brake horsepower and that all wheel drive system, it'd be able to put the power down that the i30 can't quite do. But let me know, what do you guys think of the Hyundai Tucson? Would it be your choice or is there something else out there that you'd go for it? It can get a little bit expensive and maybe that's putting you off. Let me know in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more reviews like this, please do go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 25K and I really need your guys' help to get there. Until next time guys, see you later.